This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. It's four wins in a row for the Sacramento Kings. They beat the Magic last night, 107-99 in Orlando. Buddy Heald led all scores with 25 points. The Kings get tonight off before heading to Atlanta to take on the Hawks. The NFL trade deadline passed yesterday with no action from either the 49ers or the Raiders. The Lions did trade wide receiver Golden Tate to the Eagles. The Jaguars sent defensive end Dante Fowler to the Rams. The Broncos shipped wide receiver Demarius Thomas to the Texans. And the Packers sent safety haha Clinton Dix to Washington. Draft picks were the compensation in all of those deals. And the Sharks tied the Rangers at three with 1.3 seconds left in the third period last night on Tomas Hurdle's fifth goal of the season. But the Rangers pulled out the victory in a shootout. Those are your top stories. And now back to the drive on Sports 1140 KHGK. I'm not letting you go to work today. Wait, what? Everybody, listen up. Welcome to the drive. Morning, morning, morning. You're going to talk. Get on the phone at 339-1140. Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 44-1140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The drive starts now. I'll let a local comedian and uh, all-around good guy, Lance Woods, he could say it better than I could. Sack tail, stand up! The Kings is back, baby! That's four in a row! That's five games before Halloween! We ain't win five games last year till Easter! But we back now, baby! Them young boys is balling! Fox is balling! Willie is balling! Bagley is balling! I just want to know, when is the parade? When is our championship parade? Because you can put it in the books! We go... Joe's Crab Shack. We having a championship parade at Joe's Crab Shack. We going from Joe's Crab Shack to Kick Sun Limited to Punch Bowl Social to the Touch of Class, then the Top Golf. We going all through Sacramento because we back, baby, and we petty too. This with the Kings Twitter posted. What's worse, Candy Corn or the Lakers? And I say the Lakers because Candy Corn didn't pay off the reps in 2001. <laughs> Yes. Well done, Lance Woods. Eh, Sacramento Kings won four in a row. Sacramento Kings have won five of six. And the Sacramento Kings are off today. They are uh <laughs> they are off today before they take on Orlando. And uh, hey, 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 listen. That's uh, that's a very welcome, very welcome off day for this Sacramento squad. Uh, Kyle, I I'm not ready to say championship yet. I'm not ready to not I'm, say it. You know what? I'm ready to say what? It's gonna get very awkward in here when <laughs> Warriors and Kings play in the Western Conference Finals. That's very. all I'm saying. I'll take those days off. Can I? You're a, you're a millennial. You're a, well. You were dressed as an avocado. I assume you're getting it's a little warm. It's hot in here. Oh, dude. tell me about. It. I'm a freaking hippo. I'm don't, isolating. Don't isolate. I'm isolating. Don't, don't, please don't isolate. I'm dressed <laughs> as a hippo. Um, but you uh, you enjoy all kinds of music, including the uh, the hip and the hop. I do enjoy both hip and hop. Uh, w- can we do a quick like or spike and involve the uh, involve the fans? Please. As a matter of fact, like yeah. or spike, it's very simple. Just text in to the Jiffy Loop text line at 441140. Uh, this is about a minute we're going to play because I want to spend a little more time on the Kings. But uh, this, is, this is your very own Marvin Bagley uh, with a new release. This is called Dreams with a J, with a J to start. Dreams, right? Dreams. Uh, on Apple Music. Not dreams. Uh, dr- dreams. dreams. Uh, this is uh, your rookie, Marvin Bagley. Uh, I take the trolley. You need a mission. Got the squad and here we on it. And man, I walk up in the building like I own it. I was born in 99, but I'll be balling like a motor. I don't know you if you're coming in my circle trying to hang. I just pop up on these tracks and play them back and let it bang. Don't be thinking it's a game. I ain't playing with these lanes. We're from Zona at the Cali Dream Squad. That's the game, huh? Some big dreams. Big dreams. I know people do some sick things. I enjoy that. Uh, the production needs work. Whoa, shade. No, at not Marvin at all. Bagley. Not at all, because the only thing keeping that from, the only thing I, I disliked about it was the fact that the bass was just maxed out. 
Yeah, and 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 to be and I, and it, it I agree like with you. Rattled to, the, to the be sound. fair, I wonder if that that may be as much our system. I'm wondering as anything else. Yeah, maybe, but no, I enjoyed that very much. I want to listen to more of that. He is. Uh, When's the album drop? I, I and can know. we get Marvin on the show to talk about his album? I would. You know what I would love to do. First off, I'd love to do that. Uh, I uh, no ifs ands or buts. I'd I'd love to do that. Uh, secondly. Secondly, I would love to get Marvin and Iman in here. Iman also uh, has been known yeah. to do a couple things. I would love to get them both in here. And 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 why not have them both come in? We can send them a a a couple of beats in advance, instrumentals, and then have them come in and do a, a freestyle. I see that on other shows. Why can't we do that? And I'd like for one of them, can you please write a song about the Kings? Yeah, like one time. Just, just once. Just, just name drop the Kings, maybe? We will adopt it as the thing. It, ha- it would have to be terrible. Really terrible. For us to not adopt it as a Kings In theme fact, song. In fact, you know what? No, not really terrible because there's a line that it crosses. So there's like the good, right? Yeah. And then it eventually gets to the point where it's like, this is bad, we can't play it. But then there comes a line where it's like, this is so bad, we will play it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. It does. It does. But but we don't want to laugh at them, nor with them. We want to feel Yeah, no, we want a pumped. banger. Yeah, we want a banger. I think, I think that if we packaged a few beats... And sent them to Bagley and Shumpert. And I know there were several other kings that wanted to get on the track as well. We could, and and we just told them, guys, we want a certified banger. We want a banger. Okay, a certified one. Yeah! Woo! We, this beat, guys, listen, here's what, here's what, exactly what we'll say. We'll take it to them personally. And we'll have our script ready. I think you should say all this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Guys. Guys. These beats slap. Oh, oh I yeah. know that one. Yes. It, these, these these beats slap. They slap. A lot. Slap you right, right, right across the face. Slap so much. And we need bars. We need a lot of bars. And I'm not talking bring, about the ones you drink the, at. No, we need hot. Give us a hot 16. Yes. Give me something to dance to. Yeah, DJ. Play that funky music, please. Hey, Mr. DJ, put a record on. I want to dance with my baby. You know why? Because <laughs> I just got paid, and it's Friday night. Because we don't have to take our clothes off to have a good time, Kyle. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Now that nobody's listening, let's talk Halloween plans. From the uh, from, <laughs> from the text line, uh, we did put this out as a like it spike. Uh, from from the uh, text line, uh, song was hot. When is MB3 dropping that album? <laughs> that's 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 well done. Uh, like uh, somebody wrote like a bunch of times. Can't uh, wait for the person that's like spike that music's crap. Uh, well. Vanilla Ice is better than that guy. So I think that counts as our first. What did you throw your pen for? Because. Because I was dumb. That's a bad take. Yeah. Hey, I'm just reading it. I'm reading I know. I'm not saying it's your take. Uh, like, like. Oh, wait. <laughs> Seriously, like, a bunch of these likes are from the same guy in the 209. Just, please just like or spike one time. Like one time. One vote. Uh, like, like. Man, that dude is hilarious. Oh, it's about Thank the you. other guy that started. All his skits. Oh. Uh, okay, I got you. That, so that was the guy that started me. everything out. And then the last couple of texts are people begging us to stop breaking down that song. I like it. I think it's fun. Fun song. I think if Marvin Bagley wants to make it in the Sacramento music scene, there's only one place he needs to go, and that's right Mazi. here. Oh. We're tastemakers. That's what they say. We're we're the tastemakers. Yeah. Trendsetters? Uh-huh. Go-getters. When people Eddie look at Vatter. us, when we when people look at us, they're like, wow. Those guys set trends. 
We're like the Russell Cerner. Westbrook of it's fashion of radio shows. Hippo costume. Yes. It's a hot hippo costume. Hippo though. hop is what we call it. H a w t. Uh, this guy Terrence, or Terrence. Now my dad's got me on this. Terrence Williams, Troy Williams. <laughs> that it's just a, a different T Williams. Uh, as I think he called him Trevor. Now isn't, I want to call him Terrence, but it's, isn't T Williams the offensive coordinator at USC? Probably T. Wait, is that T Williams or T, T Martin? Martin? It's T Martin. Troy Williams shot the ball. This is Mason now the free throw line feeds pocket pass to Costa, dumps it out to the corner. Troy Williams with a quick release. He hits the triple. Sacramento with a double digit advantage for the first time tonight at 83 72, thanks to the two way signee, Troy Williams. He also can do a little bit of a fast break. Five point game. Gordon drives into traffic. Collie Stein pokes it away again. It's grabbed by Fox, leaking out to the basket. Troy Williams, oh, what a drive and a score. That was electric as the Aaron Fox with a pinpoint laser-like pass and in full stride, Williams gathered and converted. And the Peck gets play of the game, went to Nemanja Bielitsa. Here comes Buddy Heal with it for Sacramento. Not the quickest transition, but Buddy with the dribble alive gives to Bellick, looking for the first lead. There it is, the Kings go on top. That was your Peckus Brothers moment of the game. Get the spectacular backyard you have always wanted with a beautiful Peckus Brothers patio or sunroom. Best price, best value, guaranteed every day. Peckus Brothers. We'll take a break. When we come back, let's get into some football. Kings again at 735. Four down territory next. Who is the big winner of the trade deadline? How stoked are you about Tankapalooza 2000? 18 tomorrow between the Raiders and Niners, and we got our power rankings as well. It's the drive, Sports 1140 KHDK. Four down territory brought to you by Fire Wings. Hey, 21 different flavors to choose from. That's a lot of flavors. Firewings.com. Just wing it. Kyle Madsen, formerly the avocado. Question one, or first down. <laughs> Who was the big winner of the trade deadline? <sighs> and I'm, I'm only going to think of this on the side of people that, that were acquired, not like, oh, well, they got a pick for this guy. Uh, I'm going to say the, the uh, I'm going to say the Redskins. You know, they've had some injuries on that defense. Ha-ha Clinton Dix uh, is not bad at what he does. And I, I, I think the Redskins are, I, I'm not ready to believe in them yet, like we talked about, but I, I think they're a quiet team that has put together a couple quality wins and they're right in the thick of everything. And and bringing in a guy like Clinton Dix, uh, at the very least to hold the fort until they get healthy again, that's a good move for them. Uh, Dante Fowler's interesting. Golden Tate also very interesting. That's the one I was going to go for. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Redskins here. Good job by them. Yeah, I think for me it's the Texans. They got a high-quality receiver to, to fill in for Will Fuller. And that's going to be a nice piece for Deshaun Watson. Sure. I almost said DeAndre Hopkins, but that, that's not going to be well, that good. Well, also a nice piece I mean, for him, too. I suppose so, but a, a good target for Deshaun Watson to replace Will Fuller, like I said earlier. Different type of receiver, but he'll help keep that offense going. Second down. Second down. Second down. Who is most likely to tank tomorrow's game, the Raiders or Niners? <laughs> I, I, I think the Raiders are a better team, but I also think John Gruden is really kind of in full tank mode. Conspiracy theorists would, would say they pulled their foot off the gas big time in the fourth quarter against the Colts, where they were at score, what, 21 nothing in a game that was uh, quite close and that was in reach for the Raiders to certainly win. So it's kind of weird. I don't know how to pick tomorrow night. Because I think the Raiders are a better team. And I think if both teams, as they stand right now after injuries, if they're playing full force, I think the Raiders win this game. But I think John Gruden is Mr. I want picks, and I want good picks. I think if if one of the teams is going to actually try to tank this game, I think it's Oakland. Yeah, I'm with you. We saw the 49ers last year. They had prime opportunity to go 1-15, and 2-14 and 14 maybe. And we saw them rattle off five wins to end the year. They're not about draft pick position or draft position whereas the Raiders have made it very clear in trading two of their best what mm-hmm. four players yeah. 
that they are all about the draft picks. And if I don't think either team is going to actively try to lose, but if you told me one team is going to try to lose, I would I would imagine it's the Raiders. Third down. Third down. Are you surprised that no quarterbacks were moved? I am, only because there was a part of me that really thought Jacksonville would go after somebody. Uh, I, I Listen, most of your crappier teams in the NFL, and we're talking, you know, the bottom of the rung, uh, the Jets have Darnold. Obviously, the Colts have luck. Maybe the Broncos, but he hasn't played. Case Keenum hasn't played terribly for the Broncos. The Browns have Mayfield. The Cardinals have Rosen. Uh, the Bills have Allen. So I understand that. That's their future. Jacksonville, I still think, is a championship caliber team. But Blake Bortles sucks. And I, it did surprise me a little bit that they didn't go after uh, a Nick Foles, that they didn't go after even a Terod Taylor, somebody that could come in there and push Bortles. That surprised me. Yeah, if anybody was going to go get a get a quarterback, it was going to be Jacksonville. But at the same time, you're entering week eight. Yeah. And to get a quarterback in and on board, get the team behind him, and get him to be able to fully run your offense in time to be an impact player in the postseason. I don't think that was going to be worth the draft capital it was going to take to go get a quarterback. So mm, three and I, five. I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised, but not super shocked. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. All right, top five power rankings. You've never watched football until this year. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go at number one. I'm going to start at the top and work my yeah. way down because the top's easy. Uh, yep. The Rams, number one. The Chiefs, number two. I actually think three and four are easy, and you could flip-flop them if you want. I've got the Saints at number three. Uh, they just cannot stop winning after that. The oh. Saints the, the Saints might wind up in the Super Bowl. You know. They're really good. They're really good. And, and that Michael Thomas, uh, Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram trio. And then they've got, uh, who's the kid at quarterback? Uh, the, the, uh, the, Taysom Hill. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, no, the other one, the short one. Teddy Bridgewater. No, no, the the short one that with the thing on his face, uh, the the Gorbachev. Uh, oh, Trevor Brees. Uh, uh, yeah, I think him. Yeah, he's okay. Uh, and 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 that defense isn't terrible. And that defense does have a couple of playmakers. Uh, the the Saints have bounced back off of that embarrassing home loss that knocked a lot of people out of their knockout pool to hey. Tampa Bay. Uh, I will go Saints third. I think the Patriots have you know done what the Patriots do. Yeah, the, uh, the Patriots for a while we couldn't put them in these rankings because we couldn't take last year into account. Right, but they have been dominant the last few weeks. And I struggled with number five. There were three teams uh, I looked at at number five, but I, I'm going to th- I'm going to allow them to make their power ranking debut for the first time this season. I, I'm going to put uh, the the smarter Gruden brother and the Washington Redskins in at number five. A uh, couple of quality wins for those guys. I just looked a little bit more at strength the schedule. They're not exciting. Uh, it seems like they could lose each and every week, uh, but they haven't, and they're five and two, and they're first in the NFC East. I'm gonna go Redskins. I have the Panthers at number five. I looked at the Chargers, the Panthers, yeah, and the, the Redskins. I have the Panthers five, Washington six, and I'll accept arguments to to flip those for sure. I would say mm-hmm. that the Redskins' biggest wins are against the Panthers mm-hmm. and also against Green Bay. And I don't it's, I don't okay. I don't think well I'm just what? I mean Green no, Bay No, no, that's I that I mean that's okay. Green Bay's all right. Uh they beat and now they also beat the Cowboys a couple weekends ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Giants don't really count and they have uh, a bad loss to the Colts. But their only other loss was to the Saints. After watching what the Panthers did to a Baltimore defense that was giving up like 13 points a game, I was very very impressed by by what they did so they go they go five for me right uh now. panthers uh went into philadelphia and beat them two weeks ago they beat the ravens last week uh other wins cowboys Bengals, and giants so it's a flip of a coin now remember we're, we're and that giants win was a last second long it field. was it was that was the sixty thousand yard graham gano florida state field goal uh I, the, the only the coin flip for me was just the head-to-head it was just the that's head. fair it was the head-to-head but i, I i'm with maybe you. i i'm I think I might be letting 
past bias trickle Ooh, in a little bit. Is it your week for that? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Uh, because I just I we we've talked about this before. Cam Newton just to me is such a a outlier at the quarterback position yeah. that he just always is always gonna he has the leg up over Alex Smith for me. Since we are doing power rankings based on this year alone, before we go to break, would you like to make an official change, or are you going to stick with the Panthers? I'm sticking with Cam Newton and the Panthers because of what they did to the Ravens. Okay. We'll take a break. What was the line I'm I'm, I'm reminded of coming to America? Joe Lewis beat, uh, who was it, Joe Lewis and, uh, uh, who were the two, did you see coming to America? Not in a long time. Okay. Joe Lewis, oh, Joe Lewis beat Rocky Marciano? Or was it Rocky Marciano beat Joe Lewis? Other way around, yeah. Yeah, he was 77 years, that's what I think. I think, wow, the Redskins beat the Panthers. But they'll play again. They'll have their revenge game soon, and we'll all be watching. Just like we'll all be watching tomorrow night, Raiders and Niners. And Scott Bear will join us at 8.05 on the Firewings Hotline. 21 different flavors to choose from. Firewings.com. Just wing it. Coming up next, so it's all Kings for you. All Kings, all the way till 8 a.m. We will break this thing down. We've got highlights. We'll look ahead to Atlanta on Thursday and oh, so much more. It's a drive. Sports 1140 KHD. Hey, this is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Kings made it four wins in a row with a 107-99 win over the Magic in Orlando last night. Buddy Heald led all scores with 25 points, while Troy Williams had a good game off the bench. He had 12 points on five of nine shooting with five boards and two blocks. The Kings get tonight off before heading to Atlanta to take on the Hawks tomorrow. The NFL trade deadline passed yesterday with no action from the 49ers or the Raiders, but the Lions did send wide receiver Golden Tate to the Eagles. The Jaguars traded defensive end Dante Fowler to the Rams. The Broncos sent off wide receiver Demarius Thomas to the Texans, and the Packers sent safety HaHa Clinton Dix out to Washington. Draft picks were the compensation in each of those deals and Tomash Hurdle tied the Sharks with the Rangers at three with 1.3 seconds left in the final period last night but the Rangers went on to win that game in a shootout at San Jose those are your top stories and now back to the drive on sports 1140 KHTK it's the drive on sports 1140 KHTK Stand up! The Kings is back, baby! That's four in a row! That's five games before Halloween! We ain't win five games last year till Easter! But we back now, baby! Them young boys is balling! Fox is balling! Willie is balling! Bagley is balling! I just want to know, when is the parade? When is our championship parade? Because you can put it in the books! We go... Joe's Crab Shack. We having a championship parade at Joe's Crab Shack. We going from Joe's Crab Shack to Kick Sun Limited to Punch Bowl Social to the Touch of Class, then the Top Golf. We going all through Sacramento because we back, baby, and we petty too. This with the Kings Twitter posted. What's worse, Candy Corn or the Lakers? And I say the Lakers because Candy Corn didn't pay off the reps in 2001. The final seconds tick off the clock, and for the second consecutive year, the Kings have swept Florida with a victory last night in Miami and a win tonight in Orlando. The final score is 107 to 99. The defense rising to the occasion as the offense struggled in the fourth quarter, forcing seven turnovers by the Magic, and that was huge in getting the win after the Magic had closed from 13 to within two, and the Kings end up winning it by eight. You know, I like winning. It's better than losing. Well, I think I heard that from somebody else once. Somewhere. Oh, why is that so low? Ah, screw it. Who cares? Because you're playing the bed. Because I'm playing the bed? Is that right? If I don't play the bed, will it... Oh, do I not have my thing? Ah, I don't care. Why Why is that? Why is that? Why? I had a whole... Oh, because... Hey, Kyle. Yo. Kyle, it's because I'm playing the bed out of the same exact thing. Yeah, duh. Yeah, I told you that, Kyle. No, I told you that. That's why it's Halloween. Ooh. Ooh. Kings win. Kings have won four in a row. Kings have won five.
five of six. And I love winning. I love winning, man. I love winning. You know what I'm saying? It's like better than losing. Grant. Oh, boy. Grant. It's such a good, tremendous edit. If you don't like that, you don't like NBA jerseys. Do we yeah. have a Do we have a dandy? And we have got a dandy here in Sacramento. Mmm. How about you, Doug? <laughs> How about you, Jason? Roar. Okay. Uh, that's G-Man. I know. I just oh, attached okay. to Jason now. Well, I know we had a discussion about it, and yes. I finally asked Jason. I said, I said, J-Man. J-Man. Hey, J. Jason. J. J Doc, J Money. This is G Man. Things getting together here as they bang each other at midcourt and then head toward the bench. This is De'Aaron Fox. So I'd slide in whoever deems I want to slide in. That mm. is correct. What do you think? 100% dead as wrong. Well, I don't oh, know about okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. What did I tell you, Calf? I don't know. Well, speaking of De'Aaron Fox, he played hurt yesterday. And uh, a, a big uh, The Drive shout out to De'Aaron Fox. That, that, that. That back is hurting. We we talked earlier. This is really the first major test for that re. I don't know what the right word is. Revamp. There's still some of the same people on the training staff. I think a couple. Uh, Pete Youngman's gone uh, along with uh, a couple others, and, and so there's a fairly new training staff here, and, and that's part of the game. This is a big test for them, where you do you, do you bandage them up and put them out there. Uh, or, you know, Dave Yeager came on yesterday when he surprised us at 8.30 and said, hey, we, we want to win them all. You know, we don't want to just split. We want to win them all on this road trip. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the day off and, and, and what some rest and rehabilitation does for Fox going into tomorrow night versus uh, Atlanta. Uh, the Kings historically play well in Orlando. The Kings historically do not play well, do absolutely do not play well in Atlanta. But... The Kings play historically worse in Miami than Atlanta, and they've won two in a row there. De'Aaron Fox, as uh, he mentioned on the postgame, De'Aaron Fox has never lost in Florida in his NBA career. That's two years now. You remember the big dunk last year. Kyle, no one's winning a championship here. There's probably nobody making the playoffs here. But through a very early part of the season, this is this is – other than the Rockets maybe being as bad as they are, you could argue this is the feel-good story of the year so far in the entire association. Yeah, I judge everything based on my Twitter timeline. And after the Kings won last night, there were more non-Kings fans talking about the Sacramento Kings in a positive context than I have literally ever seen. Funny you say that because we here in Sacramento are very sensitive to really? to the national media especially – and if we're being honest with ourselves, the national media, not always, Jay Billis, but in many cases has been justified in making fun of this franchise because they've been a, a, a walking Benny Hill gag for a, the better part of a decade. Right. When you listen to like national podcasts, <clears throat> like, I won't name any specifically, but when they talk about the Kings, they're just like, yeah, nobody cares about Sacramento. Yeah. Bill like, Simmons. that's the general. <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> sorry. She's, you have a little hiccup there? I'm loving the passive aggressiveness that's already started out of Bill Simmons. He's not going to be able to compliment this team with a straight compliment all year because at the oh, front of is. his mind, he's pissed about that Celtics pick possibly dropping and dropping that they oh, don't. Oh, definitely. He so, was yeah, a, you can't yeah. – You and it's something I learned about him specifically is you can't – he doesn't count as national media. He is a Boston sports fan Absolutely. with a platform. And, and, and to his credit, he wears that on his sleeve. He does. He, he's Absolutely. always worn that on his sleeve. But people that want objective analysis from him, good luck. National media weighing in. Uh, Sam Amick of The Athletic. Don't look now, but the 5-3 and three Sacramento Kings are not only in playoff position, but are three games ahead of the Rockets and two and a half ahead of LeBron James' Lakers. Nemanja Bialica with 21 points and eight boards tonight and a win at Orlando, proving to be a really nice pickup. Now, in Sam's case, you know, Sam lives here, and Sam's always been very kind, as kind as possible to the Sacramento Kings. But Brian Windhorst of ESPN tweeted, who knew Nemanja Bialica backing out of a deal in Philadelphia and then signing in Sacramento would end up being one of the most impactful moves of the entire NBA summer. 
stealing him from Philadelphia. Revenge for that trade by Vlade? Maybe. And finally, our good friend Mark Stein responding to a tweet where somebody posted Memphis at 4-2, and two, Houston at 1-5. and five. Mark Stein quote tweeted and chimed in Sacramento at 5 and 3. So little, little bits of national media are like raising an eyebrow. Well, it's been interesting. On. It's been interesting because the only reason people have really had to say that the Kings are going to be bad mm-hmm. is because, <laughs> because <laughs> you see what I sent you. I I did. Uh, I forgot. Get, I'm sorry. Um, they they basically just went. Well, these players they're accumulating aren't going to be good because they're the Kings, right? Dear and Fox might be okay, but Marvin Bagley was the wrong pick because it's the Kings. Nemanja Bielica, uh, you know, isn't that good of a player. And good luck in Sacramento. Why would you want to go to Sacramento? I forgot one national media member. Oh. Don't look now. The Sacramento Kings. Oh, dude, you tricked me. Oh, don't do that. I don't want to read that on the air. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't think you would even look at it while you were on the oh, air. Oh, I totally did. I thought you were doing a bit about how. I called out all the na- all the national media members that have said something nice about the Kings, and then the tweet that you sent me from you was a very nice tweet about the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, it was it worded exactly like Sam Amix from four years ago. Now, I, I, <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to use this as a bridge to actually make a point, though. Kyle was, Kyle was sending me a tweet from four years ago where he said, don't look now, the Sacramento Kings are 5-1. and one. What a game in Phoenix. And that, you'll, notice, you'll notice how close I am when I took that picture. Uh, you, right were, you were right there. Nice seats, by the way. Thanks, man. Yeah, was great um that was an overtime game yeah i remember that game very specifically because that was the highest point this franchise has had since they were in that playoff run with the artest bonzi wells years and i think that's part of the reason why kings fans like me are are still very very uh nervous about buying in because the last time anything like this happened our star player got viral freaking meningitis and our coach got fired for no good reason whatsoever and that set us on another spiral soon after Isaiah Thomas gone DeMarcus Cousins traded that whole deal Vlade Divac taking over what? nothing okay so I'm 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 a, I'm nervous, but I'm enjoy- I I think the place I'm finding myself in is I'm not ready to talk playoffs. I'm not ready to uh, go overboard, other than just Twitter hyperbole. Okay, can, fun. Can I go overboard, please? When would you be ready to talk playoffs? January. January. Yep. That's our cutoff. Yep. Okay. Good to know. The new year. The new year. Because I'm watching I'm I'm watching the Kings, and I do so. I think fairly objectively, like I want them to do well, but I wouldn't label myself a Kings fan. What they're doing, I don't think is is unsustainable, and I think they're beating good to decent teams with it. And I mean, the the Heat aren't some finals contender, neither are the Magic. But it's not a coincidence that they played the Jazz close. And they played the they played the um, um, Pelicans. Yeah, they ran with the Pelicans. The Pelicans, I mean, pulled away late. Flew with the Pelicans. They flew it nice, dude. Thanks. But it's not a coincidence that they're that they're hanging with these with these good teams. And maybe you know they're not quite there yet. They're not championship contenders yet. And, and a good team like the Pelicans is going to pull away from them. But I think they can beat enough kind of mediocre to bad teams that. That they can that they can make a push where in January we're going, oh crap. Here's the counter to that. Please. There are a lot of players on this team that are shooting at a very high clip right now, and there's a question as to whether or not that high clip is very sustainable. There's a question as to whether or not that clip they're shooting at from outside is sustainable for guys that have never done this in their career. That's number one. Number two, Coach Yeager said it himself yesterday when he called in. You know, we were talking about the speed and going up and down the floor. He said Teams haven't scouted us. You know, teams will scout that. 
they they will eventually scout out that speed, just like he mentioned that everybody was mm-hmm. hanging on Marvin Bagley's left arm yesterday because they've obviously scouted that. I think of any style for you to come out of the blocks with that is going to surprise teams and work in the beginning of the year, it's out-and-out out speed because you have a lot of veteran teams. Sure. You have a lot of good teams that usually are also veteran teams that don't always come out of the blocks that great. We talked about that yesterday with the old Spurs teams, uh, some of the Shaq, Kobe, Laker teams. You look at the, some of the best teams around, even your Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Oftentimes you will see, you, you'll see some weird losses. Right at the beginning of the season. Sure. As the season progresses, as teams get in mid-season shape, it becomes a little bit more different to run them off the floor. But they don't have their best player from last year in Bogdanovich. They haven't gotten anything out of Harry Giles. Harry Giles, two DNPs in a row now, getting to watch the game a little bit. So there are some signs that, well, you add these guys in. My big concern is... Is the outside shooting, is the three, not the mid range, is the three point shooting sustainable for this club? And the key to that is probably Buddy Heald. Sure. Buddy Heald has been fantastic in this run. And I think has shown everybody that he is an NBA starter. And when. He was a top 10 pick. He sure was. But that doesn't obviously guarantee NBA starting. He was a six man. Sure. But the talent, but the talent is there. Like Buddy Heald was a dynamite shooter at Oklahoma. Was and in, he did uh, it for uh, four years. Yes, he yes he did. But he was also a very big streak shooter at Oklahoma in a good way. Don't get sure. me wrong. Like he's the type of guy that can go on that run. He's not going to pull a Clay Thompson thirty seven probably. But I could see Buddy Hill dropping twenty five in a quarter on a special sure. day where he got very hot. He's that type of guy. Willie Cauley Stein is playing out of his mind right now, as predict. That's the one prediction I got right this year is that Willie Cauley Stein would play out of his mind this year. Yeah, big athletic dudes that can run typically thrive in a system where they can run. The the question is, is that sustainable? Well, we all know how important Willie's upcoming contract uh, is to him. And uh, he was asked something about trying to get paid and the pressure that goes with it after last night's game. I don't feel like a pressure or nothing. Like, I just play. It's going to take care of itself. Um, It already is. Um, I just got to continue to play hard and play aggressive, and that's the consistency that everybody's looking for. So um, I think I got it pretty much figured out. That's the exact right answer. Yes. That's the exact right answer for him. It'll figure itself out. And that's what he's been told by the front office. That's what he's been told by anyone who's going to be either signing those checks or making the decisions as to whether or not those checks are signed. Just play the game. Yeah. Play the game. It will figure itself out. Costa Kufis has come in, and I think he has been as seamless as possible for this club, and a lot of people have questions about that. He plays his 12 minutes. He does his job. He takes some of the pressure off of Bagley. He takes some of the hits, as Coach said, off of Willie Cauley-Stein. He goes back to the bench, as pro as can be. Now, I think I, I think eventually, I think if they had their way, uh, I, I think Costa Kufis is likely going to be on another team by the end of the yeah. year, and that, that's, not out of, that's no disrespect. That's all respect to Costa. Uh, another team where he's going to get a few more than 12, 13 minutes a game, possibly. Yeah. I don't know how often you're going to see something like Troy Williams, two-way contract. Troy Williams played 34 minutes last night, second only to Buddy Heald. Think about that. Think about Dave Yeager identifying this kid. And, And by identifying, I mean... On the roster. Yep, that's him. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's Williams. Uh, again, props to Vlade and the scouting department for for finding the kid. Yeah, but they put him in, and he plays thirty four minutes. It felt like every time a big play happened in last night's game, Troy Williams was in the middle of it. Twelve points, five boards, a couple of blocks. Did not turn the ball over, and and what doesn't show up in the box score other than the couple of blocks is he played not only did he play good defense, but he was all he's he's he stinks of Ben Gay this morning because he was all over the floor last night, flopping around, hitting the deck, and Kyle. A lot of people try to draw comparisons to these old Sacramento Kings teams of yore, the the two thousand two and ninety nine type teams. I will say the one big thing I haven't really seen talked about yet because it's early that is reminding me of that. 
those early teams had a way of bringing in guys that nobody cared about that resurrected or improved their careers in Sacramento. I'm talking about Vernon Maxwell, John Barry, Scott Pollard, Bobby Jackson even. Even Doug Christie was having issues in, in uh, either L.A. or Toronto, I forget, before it was Toronto before he came over here and was was great in Toronto. I mean, Kyle Lowry just broke his uh, franchise record for steals over there. He did work there. But Doug did not ever have a better part of his career than in Sacramento. Same thing with Vlade, same thing with Weber. What what have we seen this year? We've seen Nemanja Bielita come in. Who cared about Nemanja Bielita going into the season? Who the hell was he? He was he was literally going back to Europe. Yeah. And to all of us, he was Nemanja Bajelica. We didn't know how to pronounce his damn name. Yep. Much like Hidiyet Turkoglu when he was drafted as the Michael Jordan of Turkey. True story. But they come in here and they resurrect their career. Williams comes in here and it's one game. He's doing phenomenal things. I think when you talk about possible regression, Bill Eats is the guy I'm a little concerned about. Number one. He is scoring at a clip that he has. He's 30 years old. And he's scoring at a clip he's not come close to in the NBA. And maybe it's opportunity, maybe it's system, and maybe he just winds up scoring 22 points a game or whatever. Yeah. But his previous numbers indicate that there is a pretty steep regression coming. Is it sustainable? Going into yesterday, the Kings had played the, I think, sixth toughest schedule in the NBA. I think I said fifth yesterday. It was six. And... I think they dropped down to 10th or 11th with the Orlando game. They'll drop uh, probably down to the the mid to high teens with the Atlanta game, and then they'll probably end up after the road trip being top 10 because they're facing right now the best team right. in the NBA. Right, it fluctuates Bucks. a lot very with much small in the beginning size. of the year. Yeah. But when you look at your advanced measurements, whether it's strength of schedule, which is an advanced measurement, or RPI, this team, a team that that again only three other teams have more wins than they do. Um. We don't know if it's sustainable. I don't think it's sustainable at this clip. I don't. Because if it was sustainable at this clip, this team would win 51 games. That's what they're on pace to win right now. I do not think they're going to win 51. I'm 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 okay with putting to bed the 3 and 17 start, especially since they already have hope five, so. 5 wins. <laughs> I don't think they're going to have some negative wins that are going to show up. Uh and 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 I think it's okay if people want to start adjusting from the mid 20s like where i was into the 30s i mean it's okay to do whatever you want let me be clear you can say they're going to win 60 games that's sure. fine um are you are you doing that are you adjusting no you you're still sitting 23 to 25 I said 25 i'm not changing a thing right now Somebody said to me yesterday, I have a, I okay. have a, I have a picture of uh, Slamson as my avatar with his face buried uh, in a courtside seat, you know, like like a frustrated right. okay. Slamson. Okay, so I see. So you're not, you're just not touching it. Not, not even touching breathing any on. of that. Got it. Okay. Speaking of Bull I'm Durham. With that, uh, I'm with you. No, I got Davis you. We don't, we don't, no, yeah, we don't have to right. talk about it. What are you, crazy? 339 Scott Bear coming up in a little bit. Let me clean up some of your texts here. Uh, what is a two-way player? Does that mean they can call him up from the G League and send them back there uh, anytime they want? That is exactly. No, it means he plays offense and defense. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. From the nine one six, are the Rockets being terrible? Really, one of the feel-good stories of the year? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the Rockets being bad, along with the Kings being good, are probably the two biggest stories of the year so far. The Kings being the feel-good story. Unless you hate the Rockets, I do. Then that's really it's a feel. Really, good. honestly, could not happen to a worse team. From the nine one six, go back and watch some clips. Dave Buddy Heald was phenomenal. Oklahoma. Hey, listen, I watched Buddy Heald and I rode that Oklahoma team or tried to ride that Oklahoma team in the NCAA tournament. I watched plenty of Buddy Heald. I never said Buddy Heald wasn't good at Oklahoma. I'm I pretty said, sure I said he was outstanding, and you said he was also very streaky. He's, he was a very streaky shooter, meaning and, he was outstanding. And and, 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 and and again, and that's not a. That's not an insult on Buddy Heald. I'm saying he's the type of guy, one of maybe 10 players in the in the NBA that are capable of having a 25-point type quarter. We saw that, remember, uh, the Clippers game a couple of years ago uh, when, when Buddy Heald almost single-handedly got that game on the road by his patented yeah. steal three-point shot type of deal. All right, we'll take a break. It's good stuff, though.
It's really, really good stuff. And right now, I'm very happy. I'm very happy, Kyle, that Kings fans are celebrating. And I want to say this before we go to break. We had some of this yesterday. Let's just all relax on the hindsight. Let's relax on the predictions from the summer. I'm not saying this because I'm happy to wear the 3-17 and prediction. Let's save that for after the season. After the season, to me, is a time where we evaluate draft picks. Yeah. We, 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 we look and see, well, was it better to draft Bagley and Doncic? What about the people that thought this was a bad team? Do Vlade and Dave Yeager deserve extensions or deserve to be fired? Blah, blah, blah. I, I, I think Kings fans, and they're all Kings fans, regardless of what side they're on, everybody wants the Kings to win. I think it would be nice to focus on the positives right now because God knows – how fleeting they are for this if, franchise. If your initial reaction to a Kings win is, aha, I was right. Yeah. Then, like, that's not evaluate being, what you're rooting for. That's not being a Kings fan. Right. That's being you're a, a you fan. That's a narcissist. Yes. And and we're all narcissists. That's okay. I will. You can I, have that reaction internally. You can throw eggs at a guy like me, for example, after the season, I will. I will. There's nothing I want more than I want to start 17 and three, and that, by the way, is more in play than three and 17. But I also want to screw with things right now. Just, just enjoy the wins. Enjoy the wins. We'll take a break when we come back. Scott Bear will join us. We'll talk a little Raider football and uh, get into tomorrow's showdown, Toilet Bowl 2018. Woo! Right here on the Drive Sports. All right, Sports 11. Come on, KHDK.